my words could just convince myself that it happens every time. Find it so I can call just to tell my fault. I've overcome the love I want to take you with. Hey, what is up, YouTube? This is Zach with Dream Media Home Theater, and I'm here with Ron from Macintosh. And he's gonna take me through their room here at the Rocky Mountain Audio Fest and show me what's so great about Macintosh. Uh, we're actually considering bringing Macintosh on as a brand that we're gonna carry. So I'm really excited to, to hear uh, what it has to offer as well as uh, some more information about the uh, ma manufacturer and the products you guys sell. Great, well, we don't bring everything we make because we make too many models to a show, but we did bring a few new models today. So come over here. Cool. Uh, we have, this is a new vacuum tube preamp and it's called C2700. Uh, we also have a solid state preamp very similar to it called C53 that's been out about two months now. And these are traditional full featured Macintosh preamplifiers where they'd have a moving coil and a moving magnet phono input. They have a lot of digital inputs. I think this is 18 inputs in total. Uh, we kind of changed things up on this because we, on the back panel here, we have a, re a removable DAC module and this is our most advanced module we've ever made. So it would have your USB audio and your high bandwidth, all that type of thing that people look for. But what was exciting is we added ARC. ARC is where you'd hook an HDMI cable from your TV's ARC output to this, and you can go into the setup menus of your TV and the preamplifier. You can activate the ARC functions, so when I pick up my TV remote and turn my TV on, the system would come on. When I turn the, t the volume up and down on the TV remote, the volume on this goes up or down. So let the Sirius soundbar building begin. So instead of using a little soundbar, you're using your flagship two-channel stereo, your beautiful speakers that you like to listen to music to. Conversely, for that to work, you'd have to leave this on this HDMI input. If I was on any other input, that communication won't happen, and that's where you could just use your, your, your stereo and play all your music. If you like to do... YouTube cruising, you can do that on the TV or run your computer into the TV as an HDMI input. You'd see the picture there and hear the sound uh, coming out of the stereo. So that might not be for everybody, but it's an exciting thing for a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely, especially in the world of home theater. A lot of our customers use Arc every day for like the smart uh, features. You want to watch Netflix, it'll send that audio return channel right back to the uh, preamp and output to your speakers. We have customers that are often have very elaborate stereo systems that want this feature and they really don't want to have anything to do with home theater. So it's kind of interesting where they, they'd sometimes buy a home theater processor and just use it in the stereo yeah. to do this kind of decoding, which you can do with the TV and the ARC. Uh, so maybe, uh, maybe it's time has come for them to enjoy their concert videos and, and their TV shows. The real trick on this too is in the circuitry where, where it gets tricky is we'll decode anything that comes over the ARC input. So if it's a 7.1 DTS or Dolby uh, digital mix, this will turn that into high band two channel and then into analog. So nice. it, you don't really do any adjustments, it just happens. It's all automatic. It's all automatic. That's key, you know, we do want the best of the best, but we want it to be easy. So this model wasn't gonna be shown here, but we, we, uh, we uh, got these built right before the show, sent these in, and these will be shipping later this month. This is the MA352, which is a kind of a different design. It's a hybrid design with vacuum tubes in the front end, solid state in the back, and this is a stereo integrated amp. Uh, this is 200 watts into 8 ohms, 350 per channel into 4, so it's, it's a powerhouse. Yeah, it's a beast. Uh, you got a lot of normal features and some that people may not be interested interested in uh, or seen before. We have the five band tone control, which is popular. Uh, we have output one, which is the preamp. That now the, the the four tubes here, two are for the phono section, moving coil. Two are for the preamp, and the preamp can can operate a separate amplifier or the one built in here or both. So it's got a it's got a number two output. When I go through here stereo output two that's in stereo these are some of the things you can adjust and we get out of that by pushing the button and then you just see your inputs you can add you can delete the inputs 
Uh, you can modify them in a lot of ways. If uh, you had a source that wasn't as loud as another source, you could bring its volume up and that'll stay in memory. So this is a pretty exciting product. Uh, display on, display auto off. We could go to, let's go back to tube lights on, tube lights off. Nice. Your lights on, your lights off. <clears throat> this also has pass through. You mentioned home theater, so again, we would take two channel uh, left, right, front out of your home theater processor. Those would go into the back of this, into the into an input. We turn pass through on. We designate that jack as where it's received. A 12 volt trigger from the home theater receiver or processor would go into this. When you turn that unit on, this comes on. It says pass through here. There's no adjustments to be made. It's two volts in, two volts out, or what we call unity gain. And you can have the Macintosh and your main stereo loudspeakers folded into a home theater system, whether it's Macintoshes or somebody else. You just need the two channels and the 12 volt trigger. Awesome. Uh, that second output on here, by the way, sometimes people want to use that for a subwoofer, so you can make that mono for output two. And that way, if you don't have two subwoofers, you just have one with one input, mm -hmm. that'll work. So this is this is going to ship the end of this month, and it'll be uh, popular with a lot of people. Nice. That's an exciting new product. Well, you know we like our bass. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What else we got? C70 preamp. Uh, pretty, pretty exotic stuff here. And these will be made through the end of the year. We're kind of proud of this. It's the best uh, tube amp we've ever made in a lot of respects. Single to noise ratio distortion. A lot of horsepower. It's a stereo amp, 125 pounds. We rated 150 wow. watts a channel. It actually makes more. Uh, we're using our, our typical illuminated or not illuminated tubes here to, to tell us different things. And we <coughs> fire the amplifier up. It's going to sequence. And what it's doing is internally, the, the circuitry is all tube for the audio. But we've got all this monitoring inside, looking at the voltages as they stabilize and swing. So as, as the tubes are going out, we're, we're heating everything up, we're making sure it works correctly, and then these will go green or blue, whatever I left them on, and when that happens, then you're ready for sound. In the advent, this is an amplifier, and this is an amplifier. So if a tube shorted out, or I shorted the speaker wires, the amplifier would shut down, and these four tubes would turn red, if it was in the right channel. So then I would check my wiring to my speaker in the right channel, make sure that was okay. If that was all okay, we know one of these tubes has gone bad. We would start substituting one tube at a time, turning the unit back on. I mean, back off and back on. And when it, when it goes through the sequence correctly, you the last tube you pulled out is the bad tube. So we use 12AX, 12ATs, small tubes, and KT88, big tubes. Man, that thing is a beast. Yeah, it's, you really you really want to be able to just substitute the tubes and bring it back to life without dragging it into the <laughs> the dealer to get service. Yeah, for sure. Because the, the tubes will wear out. I mean, it's like brake shoes on your car. It's a consumable item. From the day you turn the amplifier on, the clock is ticking on the tubes. Tubes typically would last in an amp like this at least 5,000 hours. But you can't have some that are shorter and some that last forever. It's like a bell curve. So. Uh, how much does a tube cost on average for one of these units? I, I don't know in parts. I think the big ones are 70 or 80 bucks, and I think the little ones are about 30 or 35. Ah, so okay. Not a big deal? No, it's just part of the part of the joy of owning tubes. We, we don't run this like you would a uh, guitar amplifier where you overdrive the tube and distort it. That's part of the, the, the sound you want to get out of tubes. You can't do that with transistors. We're after pure sound here. So we're known for long life yeah. tube designs. The only really penalty to using this is it does pull about uh, 250 watts at idle, and that's to get the heaters going. Uh, this system, I've got everything wired through a power conditioner here, including that system over there and my computer and everything else. And it's sitting here at about 3.55 amps. And if I turn it up, the whole system where it's really loud, it only goes up about an amp. So the tube amp consumes the power to create the electron cloud in all the tubes, and that's what the heaters do. So that's what's pulling the current right now. Matter of fact, if I shut that off, and instead of three, we're pulling 0.86 amps to power up all the other gear. I turn. That's a cool demo. I haven't done that one before. 
Nice. Uh, there, it, there it's going. Now it's got the full power supply fired up, and as the tubes kick on, you see it's pulling more amperage. Very nice. Cool. Well, this has got me excited. I think the next thing on the agenda is a demo. <laughs> Man, that's some good information. Uh, Ron really did a good job of explaining that to you guys. I hope that you enjoyed uh, this uh, full experience. And uh, in my mind, whenever I think about you know high-end audio and amplifiers in particular, uh, Macintosh comes right to the top. So this is one of those manufacturers that I'm really excited about uh, bringing on to our product lineup. And uh, I can't wait to put some systems in. It's gonna be really fun. Well, hey guys, if you are not already a subscriber on our channel make sure you smash that subscribe button down below and give me a big thumbs up if you like the video this is zach with dream media home theater thank you for watching